Um, yes. Okay. Good. All right, gang. So, um, hey, thanks for thanks for joining in. I know that uh, got a lot of choices on on uh, on Saturday uh, morning, but um, uh, this is basically uh, something that I've been I've been out actually in clubs um, talk talking about versions of this, and and as I start coming through it, as as I start um, doing it more and more, it starts altering just a little bit. Um, but this is the result, actually, of what um, Sandy did last year, when Sandy um, Sandy's model last year was served with Aloha, and so I started thinking about um, uh, you know serving with Aloha, and then uh, it was myself and Herb Lee and Lila Berg started talking about different ways in which we could do that, and I began to see that um, um, that there was really uh, leadership baked into Aloha. Um, and it was simply because in the environment that I was raised in, I was uh, raised by uh, basically my my grandmother, who was um, a pure Hawaiian, native Hawaiian from Molokai. She didn't um, hardly speak any English. I mean, she could, but she didn't really want to. Uh, my mom was pure Hawaiian. So um, and then I had all I had older sisters. So I had a lot of, you know, estrogen floating around in my house. Um, the Hawaiians call that mana wahini. So it's the, it's really the strength of women. So I was <clears throat> heavily um, influenced by that. Um, so I took um, um, basically Sandy's suggestion and extrapolated it out into sort of a, um, a leadership technique because I saw it not just myself, um, but as I walk through this and describe it, you're, you're going to say, oh, yeah, that's how so-and-so does it. Or maybe you'll say, wow, that's, that's how I do it. You know, that's, that's sort of my, my leadership style. So I want to start today with a with a story about my uh, my granddaughter. So my granddaughter's 19; she's going to be 20. We just inducted her uh, into Rotary. So, like I've said a lot of times, you know, two things you can't avoid in our house: it's hula and Rotary. You're you're not going to get away from Rotary. So, even when you're like, we got these little. I have great grandbabies uh, that got the Rotary onesies on, and so they are they are going. Uh, to have a life of Rotary. They don't even know it yet, but hey, you know, you, you got to have some values and some beliefs. And so, so um, when we inducted um, Zoe into our club, I told her, all right, dear, you got three years uh, before you're going to be the club president. And she says, Grandpa, I can't be a club president. I mean, I'll only, in three years, I'll only be 23. And so I'm like, so your point is what? I said, I said, Zoe, <clears throat> right now you're working at an optician, like fitting glasses for people for $14 an hour, right? So in three years, I mean, maybe you'll be making $17 an hour. Maybe you'll have a better job by then. <clears throat> but tell me where, where would you get an experience to uh, a leadership experience where you could be part of an organization that has CEOs in it, business owners, presidents in it, where you're the leader of those guys, and you're and you're 23 years old. Where where would you get the chance to do that? No place. But but you would. You do have a chance to do that in Rotary, because Rotary doesn't care how old you are, where you come from, your background, or whatever. If you have a desire to be a leader in Rotary you have a chance, um, you, you can have that opportunity to do that. And so I see Rotary as one of the greatest opportunities to develop leadership, not, not just in our young people, but I see a lot of people, um, I, I've got a friend who's gonna become a Rotarian, her name is Glenda Mitchell, right? So Glenda, Glenda is probably in her, about my age, you know, upper 60s maybe, spent her whole entire life as a, a, a secretary or, or, you know, administrative assistant. And so I looked at her and said, hey, you should join Rotary because then you could develop your, you could develop your leadership skills. And she, and she tells me, oh, no, I've just been a secretary my whole life. And I said, well, your point is what? I mean, you have a chance now, at, you know, 68 years old to develop leadership skills. Maybe you've always had them, but you just never had an opportunity to use them. So it's never too late. And I tell you in, Rot uh, in, in Rotary, 
And those of you guys who have been club presidents or currently club presidents, or I see some assistant uh, governors, uh, past district governors on the screen, I would say right now that Rotary's greatest challenge going forward is the development of leadership. Because when we go down and we take a look at every single club that's out there, some of them do better than others, but every year it's a scramble like, right? Who's gonna be president next year? So when you get the call from the district governor, hey, we need a PE or we need a P P E N, right? And then everybody's looking around like, oh, who's that gonna be? Who can we ask? Whose arm can we bend <clears throat> so that we can get them uh, to be the president of the club? Because why? Because nobody wants to do that. And the reason they don't wanna do it is one, they don't, they don't understand it. And then two, uh, maybe they don't understand it. And then two, we, we have to develop a system where a person goes in and they feel, they feel supported by their club, all right? Um, so today, we're gonna walk through something I call Aloha-based leadership. And, and it's basically um, a sort of tour of, of, around the way that, that I was raised. Now, I'm coming, it's, I'm coming to you from like a Native Hawaiian perspective. So I'm gonna be talking about some Native Hawaiian concepts but it's this is not a race-based thing. So think about how you were raised, whether you're raised, you know, Japanese, Filipino, Chinese, Maori, German, you know, Irish from Kansas, whatever. All right. You were raised to have certain beliefs and concepts in your life that have influenced um, what you do today. And so um, those things, I think if we if we go back and examine them and reach back and, and grasp them, we can see that that a lot of us, especially Rotarians, pretty much a lot of us on the same page. So um, let me start in uh, with this. Okay, uh, screen share. So give me the give me the thumbs up if you can see see this. Okay, good. I'm getting the thumbs up here. So let me start from the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to talk about um, Aloha-based leadership, and it's basically um, it, it's basically a, a leadership style that's very similar to um, a lot to what we do in Rotary, which is which is servant leadership, and we'll kind of get more into that as we go along. Okay, so um, those of you who've been in Rotary uh, for a while, you know about uh, you know middle of the last decade, right? So Rotary began to see um, that their, their membership was starting to go down. There were more people leaving Rotary than um, joining Rotary. So uh, they felt like they needed to do like a redo, right? So their redo was really based around a new vision, right? So the first thing they did is that they developed a new vision and this was it, right? Now, to get this vision, they surveyed and went around the entire world, talked to Rotarians everywhere, and said, okay, so um, if you're either a new Rotarian or been there a while, what do you see as your vision going forward as a Rotarian? And so people said, um, okay, um, you know, we, we want to be people of action. So you guys have heard that, right? We want to create some change, right, uh, out there. We want to have impact on communities, uh, on our communities. We want to have impact on the world obviously we want to have impact on ourselves. So Rotary established a new vision. And this was it, right? Together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe, in our communities, and in ourselves, right? So they're asking us to do some, some pretty big things, right? People unite. Now, as you know, that's not an easy thing. But they want people to unite. What to do? What right to create lasting change across the globe, around the world, which um, Rotary has been really impactful in our communities. And I think in our community, as I look around our East Hawaii community, Rotary is really impactful, and mostly right in ourselves. Because if that change doesn't happen within ourselves, not going to happen really anywhere. Right? It's like it's like being on the airplane. Hey, rapid decompression. Mass is going to come down put your mask on and then help your children or whoever needs help around you, right? Got to help yourself first. So number one thing is change it in ourselves. All right. So how do they make this vision reality? Now, those of you who've been in Rotary, I mean, we've gone over these strategic priorities, right? So the strategic priorities, quickly, I'll talk about them. 
increase impact. So increase impact came from polio, right? And I see Roz is on the call. Roz, Roz knows this, right? Because she's a polio chair. Is that when um, in 1983, when Rotary decided to take on polio, it made a huge impact. I mean, we got really close. I mean, so close to just wiping the thing out. Now, there's a few isolated cases, but Rotary made a huge impact around the world because they took something on, right? So increased impact. So expand our reach comes is a, is a, a direct correlation to membership, right? Because if we want to expand membership, get more membership into Rotary, get more Rotary members, right? You can't expand Rotary inside Rotary. You have to expand Rotary outside Rotary. So expanding our reach is, is basically doing outreach. You have talking to people that are not Rotarians, expanding our reach out into the community. So expand our reach had to do with membership. Enhanced participant engagement. Now, if your club is like, like my club, it's probably half of their half of your members are pretty active, uh, but there's about maybe 20, 25 percent of your members that are just on the rolls. You hardly ever see them. They don't participate much. Right. So enhanced participant engagement was really directed to the people that are in clubs that are just sort of sitting there. and They're not engaged. Right. Because for Rotary to make an impact, we have to have engagement from from everybody. And we're going to talk about engagement here in a little bit. All right. And then the fourth one, one was increase our ability to adapt. And luckily, we had a worldwide pandemic a couple of years ago, which really helped to increase our ability um, to adapt. Because what, what it's saying really is that, you know, um, Rotary has to has to change and adapt with the times. Right. So at, at one point a few years ago, um, I tell the story a lot. I had I had three members in my club. Um, that had uh, were all Rotarians over 50 years um, each, each, right? <clears throat> They're all in their 80s or 90s. And when I asked them, so um, in your 50 years, 50 plus years, I mean, I had Jimmy Susan there who was a Rotarian for 64 years. Um, I said, what was the most um, impactful thing that happened while you were in Rotary? And he said, it was the admission of women into Rotary. And he said, he said, uh, he's really kind of funny. He goes, you know, I didn't want, you know, them in our club. Uh, but when they came in, they changed the whole thing. And I don't understand how we managed to function for 100 years or ho however long uh, without women. So so they had to adapt to the changing times. Right. And that's why we see we see this in Rotary now where where we have different kinds of clubs. Right. Um, different kinds of focus. Um, in our clubs because we we have to adapt to make rotary work and make it relevant to what's happening today all right so those are the strategic priorities now let's go uh talk about uh, values so when um when paul harris developed rotary what he wanted to make sure is that we were we were an organization that had had some values right and so what's kind of cool about rotary is that we get up every meeting and talk about the four-way test so we can remind ourselves that these are the values that are important to us, right? That that truth is important, that fairness is important, that developing relationships and building goodwill is important, and doing things that are beneficial to everybody, right? And then you add service above self. And those are rotary values, and they have been able uh, to persevere, to survive over a hundred years now, is simply because um, because you know. You know, people can change uh, things in the world, go up and down, they change. <clears throat> but solid values like this, truth, fairness, goodwill, relationships, being beneficial to all, you know, in 125 years since Rotary got um, got invented, um, none of that has changed, right? They're still serviceable. So, so our, these values are really important. Why? Because they dictate how we behave, what we do in our daily lives. So got to have values. All right. So serving with Aloha. <clears throat> so when when Sandy brought out serving with Aloha, what I saw was that was that there was a way to connect our local host culture with Rotary, uh, because you know I would be uh, like my sister got me a Rotary, right? So we will we'd be sitting there doing the four way test after every meeting, and I'd be thinking, wow, you know, I I think uh, we were raised with a lot of the same kinds of beliefs that Rotary has. Um, but, you know, we, we hadn't identified or called it something. And I, and I think that everybody anywhere 
you know, regardless of the culture or the background or, you know, whatever, um, if you're a Rotarian today, you're a Rotarian simply because you have, you have beliefs and values that are consistent with what Rotary uh, believes and what they value and then how Rotarians behave. Okay, so I learned a, a, a lot of lessons, uh, mostly from uh, my family. My my grandmother was, um, you know, she she was basically our caretaker because my mom and dad <clears throat> went to work. And so um, the environment that we had in our ha house was kind of like harmony above all else, right? So there, there wasn't a like a dictatorship, maybe not even a democracy, but it was really a form of servant leadership where, where it was really about... Um, the benefit for the group, like what does the group need to do so that the group can go forward, right? Uh, in fact, my my dad was one of those guys that um, yeah wanted to make sure that he doled out everything equally to to everybody. Um, so we saw that uh, growing up as kids that um, um, uh, you know that that it wasn't about our our personal ability to stand out. It was like how the group was going uh, was going to move forward, right? And then how we're going to participate in that. <clears throat> so servant leadership, like Aloha, it's focused on the mutual benefit for all. And that's, uh, and you know, in a lot of places, that concept's really kind of hard, you know, because a lot of people are raised to <clears throat> say, hey, man, it's about me and I got to get mine. And, you know, the, you know, my whole thing is to try to do the best I can. And if, you know, people can't keep up, well, they can't keep up. Um, well, what I see, um, you know, it's kind of like this, right? So, so my wife, um, my wife work, works in an office, right? And so um, there, there's a gal that works sort of in the front of the office, and then there's three back offices back there, and she's in one of them, right? And so, so there's, so there's air conditioning right back there, right? So the gal that sits in the front, right, uh, because she doesn't like air conditioning, she's one of those fresh air people. She opens the door so that she can have uh, fresh air coming into the office. So what does that do though? It shuts the air conditioning off, right? So the people in the back, the six people that are in the back offices, they're all roasting while she's sitting there getting the fresh air. See, in our family, that would never happen because you know, you're know you never gonna put yourself above the welfare of everybody else, right? So it's a it's sort of a conceptual thing. Now, think about your family. Maybe your family was like that, maybe it wasn't. But our family is really about, you know, the, it has to be beneficial for everybody. It's not beneficial. Okay, <clears throat> so a local based leadership is really basically looking at people that we lead as our family, as opposed to like members of my club or you're my, um, you know, my workers or my employees or whatever. Now, now in Hawaii, that that's not too much of a jump because a lot of people do lead like that. But in a lot of other places, it's like, I'm the boss and you're not. So, you know, I'm the club president and you're not. So basically, you're going to do what I tell you to do because I'm in a position of authority, right? You know, aloha-based leadership is like, <clears throat> we see everybody all sort of on the same plane. And then just, and you're you're the leader and your job is to move the whole group, right? It's like that that whole point about when the tide goes up, all the boats go up. So, you know, we, we think of it kind of like that. All right. So if you're going to treat people like family and like that picture in the middle, uh, yeah, that's my family right there. So, yeah, we got a lot of, a lot of people uh, to do work here. All right. So what are your family priorities, right? There's safety. And, and as a family, your first job as the leader or, or uh, the main person in your family is to make sure everybody's safe, right? And that's just not physically, it's also men mentally, emotionally, all that. So there's safety within your group. So <clears throat> when I look at my club, um, my first priority is to make sure that, you know, everybody's safe, nobody's being, you know, um, attacked, made, uh, or I mean, you know, emotionally, they're not made to feel bad or feel wrong about stuff. Um, that we're in a good place where, you know, nobody's going to get run over by a truck or whatever it is. Safety first priority. Second priority is really values, right? And just like <clears throat> just like Paul Harris did when he set up the four-way test and service above self, he knew that if we didn't have values, right, that we weren't really going to go anywhere. We weren't going to be an organization that was going to prevail, right? 
And so, you know, that saying, right? You know, if you don't believe in something, then you'll fall for anything. And my dad used to say that to me all the time, right? So values are important. What, what are your guideposts? What are the bumpers uh, that keep you going down the center lane, right? And so values are important. And then the last thing, and I believe, this is me personally, I believe that the primary function of leadership is to provide opportunity, right? Opportunity for people to learn, opportunity for people to lead, opportunity for people to serve, <clears throat> opportunity for people to participate. It's our job as leaders to provide opportunity, right? And <laughs> you take as somebody, I don't know if, uh, uh, Randy, our, our DG is on the call, <clears throat> but Randy, he prides himself in, in being the chief uh, delegator, right? And so he clearly sees that his job is to provide opportunity for people um, to participate or participate, learn, serve, all of that, okay? So <clears throat> I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> some of the values that I saw uh, in my family. There's four of them. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back <clears throat> and I'm gonna relate them to uh, Rotary Strategic priorities and then we're going to talk about that okay the, fir the first thing is is ho'ihi and ho'ihi means respect it means giving value to things right and the basis of that so you guys that live here a long time you hear this uh the term pono right well that's not pono or you know it has to be pono and pono uh we know means um it has to be fair it has to be just it has to be right right <clears throat> so but the the whole system of pono and um, it was really uh, developed in the Hawaiian's belief system. It's all based on the fact that you have respect, because without respect, there is no pono, right? Uh, the other concept is pilina, and so I don't know if you guys have heard heard of that. I mean, if you if you listen to Hawaiian music, you hear pilina a lot, right? So what pilina means? Pilina is the is the um, relationship. So people talk about relationship. But it's also beyond that, it's about connection with people, right? Because relationships, as we know, right, they can go, you know, you can have short relationship, long relationship, good relationship, bad relationship, but relationships can go up and down. But connection, that's that's uh, forever, right? So like I have uh, members in our club, right? I have, good, I have relationships with them, but I have connection with them that, that doesn't change regardless of the circumstances, right? Yeah, connection is super important. And the Hawaiians believe that 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 all things are connected. Every, all things, everybody's connected because at the end, um, everything has energy and everybody's connected by that. So in our local culture, right? Love, like like in 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 my world, I have a lot of people say, you know, love you, you know, at the end of whatever it is, men and women. So when people in Hawaii say love you, you know, it's not a it's not sexual or romantic. It's about it's about uh, respect and gratitude, right? <clears throat> so we were we did this uh, uh, function January one where Randy got inducted, and so I was in the parking lot putting stuff away, you know. And um, uh, Steve Handy from um, Hilo Club, he comes out. Now, of course, you know Steve has had a couple, so he's feeling pretty good. But he comes up to me and he goes, "Brother, I just I just love you, man," you know. And what he's telling me is that, "Hey, man, I I respect you and I appreciate you." And, um, and that is something uh, very unique to Hawaii uh, that I see that, um, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make us better. It just makes us kind of kind of different. We're, we're more aware of that. Okay, second thing. So there's, there's kuleana, right? And everybody knows that word too. Uh, you know, when I was a kid, my, my dad used to get us, I had four brothers, you know, and he, he'd kind of line us up in the patio and he said, hey, you know, see that garbage over there? It's not going to take itself out that that yard over there is not going to clean itself it's your kuleana to get out there and take care of all that so when i was a kid i thought actually kuleana meant uh chores right uh but later on i, I found out it meant responsibility right and so responsibility is a good thing but but i'll take it a step further when you add the word ko'u on it and ko'u means mine right my responsibility so it's really personal responsibility so late, like later on, I'll talk about personal responsibility and impact, right? So we have, we have personal responsibility, preserve, protect, perpetuate the traditions like Rotary's traditions and to keep, keep those going, right? Uh, because uh, without us taking personal responsibility, when you look at 
anybody that's out there in the world uh, making impact out there, it's people that have taken personal responsibility to do things. Uh, so my good friend, um, uh, Gary, Gary Picaro, who some of you guys may know, Gary and Gwen Picaro, right? So, so their son, um, uh, Jason, right? When he finished college, he decided, hey, I'm going to take a year off and I'm going to go around the world and go surfing. And I thought, wow, lucky that guy, right? So he goes around the world, I'll go surfing and I run into him. And I said, so Kanye, I was the surf around, around the world. And he goes, you know, Michael, it was awesome. But the thing that I noticed is that everywhere I went had rubbish, man, in the ocean. And some of them was terrible. And so, so I said, okay, well, well, you got a chance. You can do something about it. So, so Kahi got a bunch of people together and they form, form um, Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii. And so they joined with other organizations like Surf Rider Foundation. And now, I mean, they make a huge impact out there um, cleaning up all of our oceans around, uh, uh, you know, around our state. In fact, they, 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 um, uh, work together with Rotary and a bunch of beach cleanups that are out there. But that's just an example of somebody who decided, yeah, I'm going to take personal responsibility to make this happen, right? And so people who make impact are people who take personal responsibility. Okay, so the next one is kupu, kupu mao. So, so kupu, right? Kupu is when you put a um, seed in the ground and that little sprout that comes up, that's the kupu, right? And so and so kupu mao means that you're that always growing, right? All always learning. So the Hawaiians really value this whole this this kupu, right? Because the kupu is what grows into the tree, and then that tree later <clears throat> puts down what's called the kamole, the, the roots that go deep, right? And so <clears throat> our our learning or what we pass on to our generations, it's really about this whole concept of kupu. Kupu Mao, about always learning. And that lifetime learning really is the key to our ability to adapt, right? So if we want to adapt, <clears throat> like for me, I want to adapt. I mean, I want to be able to operate these <clears throat> new apps that, um, you know, come on my phone. And uh, luckily, I have grandkids who can say, hey, grandpa, it's like this, press that in. Okay, so lifetime learning, it's, it's, our, uh, it's the key to our ability to adapt. And if we want to grow as learners, and if we want to grow as, as an organization and what Rotary is doing, that we, that we have to constantly be willing to learn. Now, um, I'm in Rotary training, right? So I can tell you that the Rotary, the, the Learning Center, and for those of you guys who have been through the Learning Center, I see Bev's on the call today. Bev's probably taken more uh, Learning Center courses than maybe anybody else uh, in our district. And simply because you can get in there and all of these courses are, you know, uh, self-directed. You just click on them and start going through them. And it's because Rotary believes that the key to our ability to adapt is that we're constantly learning, right? Um, okay. Uh, I want to tell you a quick story about this uh, bird that's on the screen here. Uh, that's the Colea, uh, golden plover. And uh, and um, uh, the reason that we're um, in uh, sitting in these islands today, most of us, uh, if you're not on the mainland, uh, is because of that kolea, that bird right there. Because uh, down in Polynesia, every um, few months, they see these birds fly out into the ocean. They'd be gone for six months at a time. So the Polynesians were thinking, where are these guys going? Uh, so a bunch of brave or crazy souls, uh, depending on how you see it, they got on these double hull canoes and they want to start following these birds. And and eventually it's the birds, the tides, a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of other signals that led them to these little group of islands. Now, if you want to see how isolated Hawaii is, get a globe. All right. And you see the Hawaii is just like a little speck in the middle of the ocean. And they and the Polynesians were able to find these islands simply by following these birds because they were kupu mao. They always wanted to learn, always trying to figure out new ways to do things, right? And so as Rotarians, we need to do that. Okay, and the last one is La Lima, right? And so La Lima, you know, you see that word around a lot. So think about, I mean, you see it on signs or, you know, La Lima properties or La Lima resort. And um, <clears throat> Uh, one of our guys that, at Pets said, hey, it's a good thing you told us about that long lima. I never knew what that meant. Okay, so um, 
uh, so Lima, right? Lima is hands. Lao means many, so it means many hands. So a lot of people think that Lao Lima uh, means cooperation and working together, right? Um, and it does. <clears throat> but the advanced, the, the the deeper meaning of Lao Lima is to work together for the benefit of all. Because you can work together, but you know everybody's in there for their own priority, right? But Lao Lima means to work together for the benefit of all, to create opportunities for for us to engage, okay? So La Lima. So those four principles, um, I gave you the Hawaiian version of it, but uh, if you were raised in a Japanese home, Chinese home, Filipino, Filipino, Japanese, whatever, you got some version of this and it might have been called something else, right? All right. <clears throat> so so now let's, let's roll back uh, to those four strategic priorities that we talked about, right? Um, <clears throat> increase our impact, um, enhance participant engagement, increase our ability uh, to adapt, expand our reach, right? So my feeling is that if we want to expand our reach, we want to grow our membership, is that we have we have to show respect and interest in other people uh, so that, it, so that, you know, it, it it's that saying, right, is that people don't know uh, they don't know if they, if, if they, you care for them until they know that you do care for them, something like that, right? It's that is that we have to reach out to people and say, hey, you know, we respect, we respect and honor where you're at, and you can come and be part of our organization because that's who we are, that we're respectful and we and we honor people no matter what. And so that that whole um, DEI thing that Rotary's on, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, it's really about respect, right? It's really about respecting. Uh, people from where they come from, what their backgrounds are, what they're bringing to Rotary. And if we're able to do that, my belief is that is that we'll expand the reach of Rotary. We can grow Rotary if we're a, a welcoming organization that respects people and their culture and where they're coming from. Okay, so Ho'ihi, we talked about respect. So respect and reach connect with each other, all right? impact. And I was talking to you about, about Kali Pakara going around the world and then uh, putting together sustainability coastlines. So if we want to make an impact out there, then we have to take personal responsibility for things. Like like these right now, there's people, Alan Okinaka's in the, in the parking lot right now. They're going to be putting these Genki balls together, right? So those 50 people that are going to be down there today, they're they took personal responsibility. I'm going to go down there and I'm personally going to become involved in this thing because I want to make an impact on the waterways over in Hilo, on the waterways of, of the Alawai, right? And so that's the great opportunity that we have in Rotary is to, is to take our personal responsibility, our commitment to that, because that is what makes impact on people that are out there. So, you know, if we're talking about what are ways in which we can make greater impact, it's taking personal responsibility, you know, for these, these cleanups, for, uh, for painting, for donating slippers, um, all of the stuff that we do as Rotarians, it's because people in our clubs take personal responsibility individually and as a group to make an impact on something. So that ko'ukuleana, like I said, is the key for that. All right, so so adapting now. We learned a lot from COVID, right? <laughs> you know, uh, I learned uh, how to run Zoom, man. You know, I learned how to do a lot of things that I I wasn't able or didn't do before COVID, simply because I was forced to adapt. And so, like I said, our ability to adapt <clears throat> is really connected to our commitment to be lifetime learners, right? So, because the, the more knowledge we have, and, and and here's the thing about Rotarians, right? And that's why we talk about uh, Rotary IQ. And Rotary IQ is really, uh, what's your knowledge about Rotary? And the reason that's important is that we we see that Rotarians who are more informed are typically Rotarians that are more engaged, right? So I can look at the screen right now and see all the people that are on the call today these are all people that have high rotary IQs, meaning meaning that they know a lot about rotary. And so as a, as a result, because they know about rotary, they're engaged with rotary. They want to participate with rotary. They want to help others expand their knowledge about rotary. All right. So, so our ability to adapt is, is 
100% connected to our commitment to be lifetime learners. And that's one of the reasons why I'm connected to Rotary today is because of that. Okay. And then the last one is like, if we want to, if we want <clears throat> to increase participant engagement, if we want to like dig up all the guys uh, in our clubs that are just sort of sitting there on the rolls of kind of the dead weight of our club, that we have to engage them by simply, and I'm going to, I'm going to show you a little system here that, that could, might work for your club in, <clears throat> in engaging everybody into your club. Because what Lao Lima means, remember, is Lao Lima means not just to work together. Because, you know, if you say work together, um, in your mind, it says, well, we're, I'm going to work together with the people who want to work together. No, <laughs> Lao Lima means that you're going to work together for the benefit of all. We're all going to work together, right? So when my grandma said, you know, we go out in the yard and we'll clean yard, it doesn't mean like, uh, she didn't mean whoever wants to go. <laughs> she she meant we're all going to go out there and we're going to go we're going to do this because la lima means that we're going to work for the benefit of all and so remember that one of our primary um functions as a leader is to create opportunity for people and as we can create opportunity for people and people engage now we have the ability to work for the benefit of all um okay so i want to repeat one more time that uh, that, you know, aloha is not a race-based thing. Like, yeah, I, I mean, sometimes I do this talk and people say, oh, I can't do that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really a Native Hawaiian. It's just, I said, no, it doesn't have anything to do with being a Native Hawaiian. It's about <clears throat> having a belief in the values. I'm going to talk more about that in just a second. Having belief in the values that dictate the way in which we behave, right? It's a reflection of what we believe and we value. So it doesn't matter if you're, like I, I said, you were you were raised in a in a, a Jewish household, Japanese household, you know, Korean, Marshallese, whatever it is, right? Um, we all have values that were passed down to us and and basically given to us by other sources, and it's up to us individually to decide. All right, what values really work for me, and what can I really incorporate into my life? that can make my life more meaningful and therefore um, increase my, imp uh, my ability to impact others uh, by going out there and doing good in the community, right? So Aloha is not a, not a race-based thing. And so I wanted to make sure that you understand that because even though I came from this Native Hawaiian perspective, each of you could do exactly the same talk I'm doing right now and just talk about um, whatever values you were raised with in your household. Okay, so let me, I, I, I'm throwing this out there as, as an idea, right? Um, and so what we saw or what we're seeing in our club, and I use our my club and thank goodness, my club's cooperative. Um, so I come up with these ideas to try to help um, improve, improve how our clubs do. Um, and then I guinea pig my, my club on it. Now, now, luckily they're cooperative and they, and they don't mind doing it. So, so what we decided like uh, first that we were going to split our clubs into into like six areas um, and just have people manage these teams instead of doing it as committees. But then what I saw is that six was too much. And that um, then in Rotary, so Rotary has three uh, major things. And I know this because uh, this is what we teach um, at every PETS, every leadership uh, seminar, whatever. So the three things that Rotary is focused on, uh, foundation, right, uh, membership, the expansion of membership, and our public image, those three things. And so almost every training we do has a combination or one of those, right? Um, so I thought, <clears throat> okay, so if we have a limited amount of people that wanted to be in leadership and the clubs are struggling to figure out who's going to be what, right? Um, how about if we just divide it into three teams? And so the three teams basically is like, like the meetings team, which I call the hui, right? The finance team, which is the kala, which is which, which means money. And the service team, which is the kokua, which is the, uh, you know, people, Koku, everybody knows that word. It means help, right? So the meetings team basically manages any club gatherings, right? Including regular meetings. Uh, the finance team, uh, basically, they're in charge of raising, collecting, managing, or, or anything that involves money. And then the service team 
uh, basically works on engaging the club in joint, and I want to stress joint projects with other clubs because, I mean, your club, even if it's a big club, can go out there and you can have 20 people come out and pick up the rubbish. But like in East Hawaii, all of our clubs, like like this this Genki Ball thing, all right, the Pahoa Club was really behind this thing, right? And so uh, Susie Osborne is head of Pahoa Club. She was really driving this thing. Pahoa Club has eight members. Eight. So if just Pahoa Club showed up, and if 50% of the club showed up, they'd have four people, right? Be but because um, in East Hawaii, we, we saw or have seen or know that if we work collectively together, that our impact is, is greater, Today, we have 50 people out there, 50. And, and Susie could have never done it just with her club. So I, I want to really encourage clubs to work with their neighboring clubs. And you guys that are uh, the assistant governors, I mean, you guys are all, all seeing this phenomenon happen. So um, so keeps, keeps um, the club active in, in joint, uh, joint projects. And so uh, one more thing about... Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, I just changed the slide now. So so then what about the public image guys? <clears throat> so the public image guys come under meetings, right? And they report they report and they promote uh, on the website, social media, all of that. So the public image guys kind of come underneath the meeting group. Um, and then the, the HYRF scholarship groups, global grants, foundation giving, all come under the Kalog group, the finance group. And so everybody works together. And then uh, membership and service get tied together because I see that the best way to really develop membership is through service. Because what do we do, right? So somebody calls up and says, um, hey, Sonia, I got a doing luau. Uh, can you help my sister? There? We need servers or whatever. What's Sonia going to do, right? Sonia's going to call her friends, her family, her neighbors, whatever. And they're going to come and they're going to help her, right? And so when that when that opportunity uh, happens, right, that that's where we go. So if to me, in my estimation, if we want to grow Rotary, that's the best way to do it is to is to um, do service and invite people to participate in service, um, and then say, hey, you know, if you want to help us, you want to do more of this, join Rotary. So it's not like a it's not like a new idea, right? Uh, so clubs have been doing it um, that way. So, um, so here's an idea. Now, if, if you want uh, to have this whole slide deck, I'll, I'll go ahead and send it to you. I, I think I only got one more slide uh, to go, and if I can get the thing to change here, I can make it go. Okay. So here's the last slide. All right. So all of this is really about sustainability, right? Because we can't we can't keep Rotary going and sustain it and grow it. Um, unless we have these three things, right? And attitude. So what's attitude? Attitude is how you think and feel about something, right? So it's six o'clock in the morning, like some of you guys who are morning clubs, right? You're, you're meeting at seven o'clock in the morning. So, you know, your alarm goes off at like 5.30 and you're thinking, wow, how do I feel about going uh, to my seven o'clock meeting? Or how do I feel about going to a training, um, you know, at nine o'clock on a Saturday, uh, when it could be at the beach, right? Attitude is how you think and feel about something. And attitude basically dictates your motivation about, you know, whether I'm going to, I'm going to like this. I'm not going to like this. Attitude is a key thing. The next thing really is belief. And so why is belief important? Because belief, like the values that uh, Paul Harris gave us, belief dictates our behavior. So we behave based on what we believe, right? And then the last thing, basically, commitment. The Hawaiians call us, you know, ho'omau. Ho'omau means that, man, we're going to go forward no matter what. We're going to hold them more. We have a commitment to this. We we believe this. It's an, it's an ingrained in the way that we behave. We think it's a good thing. Like, so for me, I mean, I'd love, you know, I like having a great impact on, on Rotary. That's a wonderful thing. But my granddaughter, who's 19 right now, I want Rotary to be there for her when she reaches my age. You know, I have generations behind me that I'll I'll never see them. But when they when they show up and they want to participate and do something really great for their community, that they have they have wrote, uh, Rotary 
to do that. So the the last thing I'll, I'll tell you is that so Hawaiians have this belief, right? It's called kava mamua, right? So kava mamua means that our 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 future is really behind us, and that and that you know my ancestors are they're actually in front of me, right? They're in front of me, and so uh, my lineage goes all the way back up into uh, Kamehameha the first. So so I see those guys like two hundred years ago opening the doors so that I can be where I'm at today. So that that makes my kuleana then to open the doors for the generations that are behind me. I'll never see them. I didn't even know who they are, what's happening with them, but 200 years from now, right? That they could say, oh, my great, 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 great grandfather was involved in Rotary and they made a huge impact uh, in our community, uh, in me as a person um, around our globe. So, um, that's basically uh, what it's about, gang. Um, like I said, if you want to get a copy of this, I can uh, I can send it to you. Um, so there's another meeting. I see Mr. Del Green on, so he's ready to take over and do foundation here in about ten minutes. But <clears throat> welcome any of your uh, your thoughts, ideas, uh, comments. Um, I thought actually I was going to get done with it earlier so we could have a little breakout, but of course as it goes, talk too much. Okay, any any thoughts, any questions about that, comments? You can unmute yourself and just let it rip. Um, okay. All right. Okay, I, I have, um, I can see your uh, comments in there. Um, you know, I, I, I will say that, I mean, obviously, I think a lot about this kind of stuff, right? So when I... When I roll over in the morning and kiss my wife good morning, I say, you know, I was thinking about expanding our reach. And, and she knows that I'm talking really about Rotary. I'm, you know, I'm not proposing anything new, but um, but you know, if if this stuff is on your mind and 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 rotary is important to you, then then you'll do things and help things. Uh, uh, You'll, you'll come up with ways in which the, the things will improve. And, you know, that's that's the whole basis of the whole thing. So any any comments? Otherwise, uh, you know, we'll we'll take a little bit of a break and um, I'll have uh, uh, Dell and Laura uh, and whoever else. I think Mark is going to be on for the next session uh, to take over. No. So. Uh Ben yeah. Benson, before we end, I just wanted to tell you that as a Howley boy who moved here six years ago and has really sort of embraced uh, much of the Hawaiian background that exists here, um, and I've really grown to love it, I really appreciate this kind of stuff that you do and some of the other folks like Herb Lee and some of the other folks in Rotarians that um, sort of help me understand even more about how some of the Hawaiian history and the way that Hawaiians have done things overlap with Rotary. Um, I just want to let you know how much I appreciate it. I think you guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And, uh, you know, Nancy put something in the thing about uh, connecting with uh, Hawaii Tourism Associates because they're starting to do more, more cultural things like this. And, uh, um, and I think that that's a key thing. I mean, you know, uh, uh, those of you guys that are, so Nancy's heading off and Cindy, I don't know if you're going to zone next week. And so zone is where all of the, uh, Cindy, give me the thumbs up. Um, and so zone is where uh, districts from all over um, our, our zone, which is basically Western United States, including Hawaii, uh, we, we get together and we have uh, learning sessions and all that. Um, the other time where we all get together is is pets, right? Where we, it's uh, president-elect training in, in Los Angeles, right? And so one of the things that you see, and even these international conventions, I see some of you guys that are experiencing that. And you can pick out the Hawaii group. You can just pick them out. And you know what that is? It's the group that's, they're, they're laughing, they're talking, they're joking, they're active. Uh, they're moving around uh, just with a with a lot of uh, a lot of confidence, and and simply because that is embedded into our culture, right? So I mean, you get on an airplane, or like I, I show up in any city. I used to travel a lot, and I'd be standing at a corner. I was standing at a corner one time in New York City, and I turned over and looked at this Ali guy next to me, and he, and as soon as he went like this, he went. I knew that he was a local guy right away. 
I said, so bro, what? And so the, he goes, what? And then we just started talking. And actually, he was in my seventh grade class, Richard Schaff. He was from Kylo Intermediate. And so and so that, that is just something that just really unique about Hawaii is that is that like, like you can go into the grocery store over here, right? And like our grocery store over here in KTA, they sell them coupons. No, no, serious, like the kind you cut out of the sell coupons, right? And so the so the cashier will say, Uncle, you got the coupon. And I went, oh, babe, I don't want a coupon. I said, no worry. And she takes the booklet out and cuts it out. I said, yeah, no worry. I get you. The, you can get the, the best foods mayonnaise for like, you know, $1.25. And so so I was in there one time from with my friend that was visiting from, uh, uh, where was he from? Denver, right? And he said, he said, what was that? I said, bro, that is local life. That's the way it goes over here. And he goes, man, I never saw anything like that. I mean, like, like, when I go to, you know, Kroger's or wherever on the mainland, the cashier doesn't like whip out the coupon book and say, hey, uncle, you like that? And plus, how come she called you uncle? Are you, is that your, your niece? I said, no, she called me that because that's a sign of respect, right? So so she's saying, I, I respect you as a kuna, as an elder. And he says, man, that is, that's crazy thing. But but that's why I, I, I feel, and I, I'll always say this is that, is that, you know, Rotary in Hawaii is really, it's a unique um, experience. And it's not better than anybody. It's just, it's just different, right? And so um, that, that cultural cohesiveness that we have, that we're all raised with and we understand, that is something that, man, we can, we can build on that to just expand Rotary in, in great ways. So, so thanks a lot. I'll, uh, I'll stop talking now. And I, I think, um, uh, Mark, are you are you leading the next uh, group, or is Dell leading the next group? Who's leading the next group? In fact, wait, let me stop the recording here. Uh, I cheer myself.